Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Louis Sung, and today we're going to be discussing some of the highlights from the OTAs from yesterday's session. Now, I know that as you're listening to this as of today, the Miami Dolphins now officially have $13 million to be able to play with, with the salary cap. So we're going to find out if Dalvin Cook becomes a Dolphin or not, and we'll probably talk about if any moves are made as of the next day. But today, we're going to be discussing what exactly happened in OTAs, what didn't happen in OTAs, who was there, who was not, and why, and we're going to get into the implications of all of that. But before that, really quick, just want to go ahead and mention that this show is brought to you, as always, by You Break Wheel Fix. You Brake Wheel Fix is the complete automotive wheel solution. Ever parked too close to the sidewalk curb? You Brake Wheel Fix specializes in the repair of damaged wheels from bends, cracks, and curb rash. Or maybe your wheels are faded or peeling. You don't need to replace them, as You Brake Wheel Fix can refinish them to like new. Offering complete refinish options through powder coating, machining, and polishing, You Brake Wheel Fix is the answer to all of your wheel needs. And if you're just looking to give your ride a new look, You Brake Wheel Fix also offers many car customizing options, such as new custom wheels and tires from your favorite brands, performance upgrades, window tinting, and suspension modifications. Located just south of Aventura, you can reach Mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 or online at ubreakwheelfix.com. They are really active on all social media platforms at ubreakwheelfix, so shoot them a DM on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and get an estimate in just minutes. So don't delay, go to ubreakwheelfix and start customizing your ride to show off your Dolphins fandom today. This show is also brought to you by PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares, such as a Nikola Jocic free square that's available right now, special Taco Tuesday promos, Flex Friday specials where you can get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up at this point. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you first sign up. Again, that's promo code 5, F-I-V-E. Go to pricepicks.com, deposit your $100, and let Price Picks give you a hundred of their dollars for you to play with and get started winning today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into some of these highlights here. Now, again, the media is allowed to see OTAs like it feels like maybe once a week, really. And so you have to basically get everything you can in all at once. So we're going to be covering the report of one Daniel Oyafusi. I hope I said your name right, dude. He is with the Miami Herald, and we're going to discuss some of the things that he saw that stood out to me and what I think of those things that he said stood out. Now, first and foremost, once again, we're seeing Robbie Chosen slash Chosen Anderson slash Robbie Anderson slash Robbie with an IE Anderson making some big time plays. So I still remember when the Dolphins went ahead and brought in this guy, whether you, whatever name you want to call him by, everybody was saying that he was just going to be another camp body. He's going to be a veteran minimum type of player. He doesn't really have much left in the tank. He's just coming on a cheap discount because he wants the opportunity to compete in camp so that he can play on his home turf. But it seems to me that he's making some major plays pretty much every time he's touching the field. And in many of the videos that the Dolphins are putting out on their Twitter account, he seems to be a focal point of a lot of them. So the longer this goes on and the longer we hear about all the cool things that he's doing with Tua Tungavailoa throwing him the football, it seems more and more likely that... Robbie Chosen, I'm I'm gonna just go with that because that's the last thing I remember now. It seems more and more likely that Robbie Chosen is gonna end up staying on this team, and that's not a bad thing. the The fact that the Dolphins were able to find somebody who's good enough at such a cheap price, Robbie Anderson. I, I see, I did it again. Robbie Anderson. You, he, I don't know what I don't know what to call him anymore. I'm gonna call him everything in this show by the time we're done. Chosen Anderson. I'm gonna stick with that because that's what I got used to. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I promise. That's it. This is it. Chosen Anderson. That's what I'm gonna call him. So, Chosen Anderson. He came in, had a rotten season with the Arizona Cardinals. Could not get along with the whole Kyler Murray thing. And now he came here to Miami. He came back home. He's playing with Tua. He likes Tua. He respects Tua. And it seems to be showing because Tua seems to be giving him a lot of love during these OTAs. Now, granted. 
Everybody looks great on offense when the pads are off. Nobody's hitting each other. There's not a whole lot of pressing. It's all just basically running around and doing seven on sevens. And when those are literally designed for the offense to look good and get their reads all settled. So that's exactly when you expect the Dolphins to look really good on offense. So we will see what happens in training camp when things start to even out a little and you're able to get a little more physical. Can Chosen Anderson keep up then? We shall see. But as of right now, If I had to make a guess, I would assume that based on the comments that were made, Cedric Wilson was talking in terms that were basically very safe. He was asked how he feels about being here in Miami. And so he's saying that he's here. He wants to be here. He likes it here. And right now he is here. So he's going to focus on doing the best he can every single day. Blah, 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 blah. Those are always the answers. But it seems to me that... He, he also mentioned that he's going to let his agent deal with all this stuff and not to bother him about it every single day. So it almost feels like, to some extent, he's expecting something to happen in the near future. As if he doesn't expect to be on the roster when the whole thing goes down. So the season starts, it's very possible that Cedric Wilson will have a new home. Now, is that going to be Minnesota? I doubt it at this point. I don't think that there's going to be any trades for Dalvin Cook happening at this point. I feel like that the the Vikings have to make a decision pretty much right now. They're going to either cut him or they're going to keep him because it's the deadline is fast approaching. So I don't think that Cedric Wilson is going to be a Viking when all is said and done. But I do believe at this point, and this is something that is kind of unfortunate for me because I spent a whole show defending Cedric Wilson and what he can do on this team. I think he brings a certain stability to the roster because Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell and Chosen Anderson, they're all very explosive players. Braxton Berrios to some extent as well. Cedric Wilson, he doesn't have quite as much speed as those guys, but he's no slouch either. And he does have this certain... I don't know. I want to say, yeah, stability about him. He seems like somebody you can count on to catch the football and make a good play when needed. Now, we didn't get to see much of that because he was playing with cracked ribs last season, and Trent Sherfield basically took his slot on the team, and you weren't going to get rid of a good thing just because one other thing ended up getting healthy again. Sadly, this is one of those cases where it seems like the player lost his job due to injury, and so he was basically relegated to punt returns because we need something for Cedric Wilson to do. So we'll just make him do that. It's unfair. I think that Cedric Wilson deserves better. Now, I was talking to my friend Jason Sarney on Twitter about this. I'm greedy. I want everybody on the team. I would not go ahead and trade Cedric Wilson unless I was going to get some really good compensation for it. Like, if some team out there is willing to give the Dolphins an extra fourth-round pick for Cedric Wilson because they just believe in that guy that much, and we don't have to eat any of his extra salary, we'll be able to go ahead and just trade him, and that's the end of the discussion. It's like, you take the contract, then you know what? Best of luck to Cedric Wilson. I'll take the fourth round draft pick. The Dolphins have not been able to draft very much in the past few years, and it's been making my mock drafts very difficult to make content out of over the past couple of years. So, but that's a different discussion. Those are just my personal reasons. As far as a football perspective, if you trade Cedric Wilson, that does leave space for somebody else to make an impact. Somebody like an Eric Azumkanma, who right now looks like the odd man out. So, just to recap the depth chart again at wide receiver number one Tyreek Hill number two Jalen Waddell number three you're going to either have Chosen Anderson or Cedric Wilson or Braxton Berrios oh by the way I just named three other guys so that's one that's three four five let's say they all stay that's five receivers right there and you haven't even touched the young guys yet all those guys are veterans so who are you bringing in Eric is is number six do you even have enough space for all those for all those wide receivers? What about all the running backs you're going to be keeping? You know for a fact that the Dolphins are going to be keeping Raheem Mostert on the active roster. You know for a fact they're going to be keeping Jeff Wilson on the active roster. You know for a fact that they're going to be keeping Alec Ingold as well. And you know that Devon Achain is going to be getting snaps too. So if you count Ingold, that's four running backs already. And that's, not, that's even assuming that Savan Ahmed doesn't make the final roster, which he very well might because you never know with this team at this point. And then there's a the whole tight end position. How many tight ends can you keep? Durham Smythe is one. You're probably going to keep Tyler Croft. You were willing to pay him. Eric Saubert, that's three. And are you going to let Tanner Connor and Elijah Higgins fall to the practice squad if they make it past waivers? 
There are a lot of teams who were talking to Elijah Higgins and saying, we're going to turn you into a tight end. It's very possible that if the Dolphins don't put him on the active roster somewhere, some team is going to claim him and say, aha, now we can take on this project. I'm actually more concerned about Elijah Higgins than I am about anybody else on this roster being claimed at this point. Because if other teams were interested in making him a project, then there's a very high possibility that if the Dolphins end up putting him on waivers, he's not going to make it past. Somebody will claim him, and then the Dolphins will be out of luck. They'll have lost one of their draft picks. So I feel like Elijah Higgins is going to have to get a spot on this roster somewhere. So maybe Tyler Croft ends up being the odd man out at that position, which I'm not going to lose any sleep over by any stretch of the imagination. It's not like Tyler Croft is the end-all, be-all for this roster. So we'll see on that. Um want to go ahead and talk about another thing that caught everybody's attention. So Jalen Phillips continuing to make a lot of would-be plays in the backfield. Again, all this has to be with a grain of salt because there is no actual pads on right now. Everything is just theoretical in its base. So, But Jalen Phillips is still making a lot of would-be plays on defense. So once the pads come on, I can't wait to see how well he's going to do. Speaking of that, uh, offensive linemen. So Isaiah Wynn. And Cedric Obwehi, they're all part of the roster now. So they're all competing for the right tackle position. It's actually kind of interesting because the Dolphins were doing their media availability today. And one of the players that were talked to was actually Cedric Obwehi. And he was asked about this whole situation, right? About the fact that he's here in Miami. So he said, and I quote, why did he choose to come to Miami over everything else? He said, and I quote, what they've built so far, even last year, building on what they did last year. Obviously, I was with the Jets, so I saw it firsthand. They got something special going on here, and they have the pieces. I'm just here to add on to that and to go as far as we can. So, yeah, very cookie cutter, very vanilla, very just boring, blah, whatever. Now, that's just what's on the official transcripts. Now, here's how the Dolphins do things, right? They're very careful about letting certain things not get through to the public if they can help it, but... Ultimately, they can only do so much. If a player said a thing and the reporter makes a story about that thing, there's not much they can do about it at that point. So one of the quotes that Cedric Boy he had on May 31st was regarding where he feels most comfortable. And the story was posted, the one that I'm looking at right now anyway, is from Joe Shad of the Palm Beach Post. And he was asked, what is his preference on which side of the line he likes to play on? And without even blinking, he said... He prefers right tackle. Okay, so that tells me right off the bat, he must be in the running to compete with Austin Jackson for that right tackle position. If that's the case, then we have two first round, for lack of a better term, busts trying to redeem themselves and prove that they have what it takes. So why did the Dolphins keep that a secret? Why did the Dolphins not let that be part of the transcripts? Again, it's the same discussion. They don't want... The, they don't want it being public, who's playing where and at what position and why, all that stuff. As soon as training camp rolls around, yeah, it's going to be open to the public, but they're very strict on what reporters are not allowed to say. And one of those things is who's playing where, who's lined up where, and what kind of who's on starting team, who's on the backup team, who's on the scout team, all that stuff. They keep all of that hush-hush. I don't necessarily get the competitive advantage of it all. Usually, it doesn't really matter. You, you're going to get the film anyway during the preseason. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. If you see that there's a flaw in someone's game, it'll come out on the film in preseason. So I don't get it. I just feel like it's unnecessary. To be fair, the Dolphins are not the only team in the NFL that does this. So I understand the, pro- the concept, but I just feel like it's unnecessary. But just let it be known that according to Joe Shad of the Palm Beach Post, Cedric O'Boy, he likes right tackle better. Now, if you talk to the guys on the three yards per carry crew and they're on their OnlyFans Discord server, which, again, it's only three dollars a month to be able to be a part of that. And you're going to get some really good inside information. You can learn a lot from them. Cedric O'Boy, he is still not good. He's not. So does this mean that Cedric O'Boy, he is just an easy target for Austin Jackson to beat in training camp? I hope that's not how they're looking at it. I would sincerely doubt that the Dolphins would be that foolish. 
So we will see if they bring in more competition. I'm not really sure who they could bring in at this point. Maybe with the post-June 1st cuts, there's going to be a lot of free agents available. Maybe the Dolphins can grab somebody at a cheaper rate than what they are currently going at on their current teams. We shall see. This is essentially what is called the second wave of free agency. So all these good players, they're good players. Usually they're good players, but they're expensive players. And so they get cut by their teams because they're not worth the money that they're getting paid anymore. So other teams will pick them up at a discount and they'll be able to get something out of it. So hopefully the Dolphins will be keeping an eye on some actually good, reputable offensive linemen who they can count on. We shall see about that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about really quickly here before we call it a show is regarding Tua Tungavailoa. Oh, I know. How original, right? But we're going to be talking about Tua and his side camera. Oh, yes. Remember that? So there was this whole story that got blown way, way, way out of proportion because Tua was sighted at OTAs with a camera strapped to the side of his helmet. And... The concept is not an original idea. This has been going on for many, many, many years. In fact, Tom Brady, of all players, had a camera on the side of his helmet at one point. But everybody was making a big deal about this. It's like, oh, Tua needs to be fixed. Tua needs to isn't able to see the field. So Mike McDaniel is trying to get him to read his progressions. He's forcing him to go through his progressions. Like, blah, 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 blah. Basically, the discussion was no good quarterbacks ever, ever need to have a camera on the side of his helmet to learn stuff. Uh, Hello, Tom Brady had one, and this was while he was basically future Hall of Fame Tom Brady. There was literally pictures of him doing such a thing. So all it took was one Google search, and you would have known that. But people just decided to go ballistic with it and say that Tua is a terrible quarterback, and here's the proof. And that's always what it comes back to, right? Just needing to be proven right once and for all. That Tua is the guy that's going to basically ruin any chances the Miami Dolphins have of a long-term future. So spare me the contrived justifications for why Tua is not good. I really don't want to hear it anymore. The only argument you can make anymore regarding Tua is whether or not he's going to stay healthy throughout the season. And by the way, Mike McDaniel basically talked about this as well. So... He was talked about this during the media availability. Hey, Tua has one of those cameras on his helmet. What's the benefit of that? So this is Mike McDaniel doing his football smart talk, right? This is I love listening to him talk about this. I'm just going to read off his quote for all of you guys so you can kind of learn in his own words what it is that the camera does and what it's going to be able to help for Tua. So it's he reads, and I quote, So that's a tool that has been around in the league in different avenues, in different organizations. I can remember since the teens of the 2000s, so 2013, 2014, etc., etc. For us, it's multifaceted. It's not like anything earth-shattering. So all the fans out there freaking out about Tua having the camera. It's nothing earth-shattering. Other quarterbacks have been doing it for years. So, quote continues. It's a camera, but it does have audio, and I think some of the strong attributes of that technology are that you get to hear play calls. You can library those play calls for players to hear when they're studying. This just in, the National Football League huddles. A lot of college and high schools don't, which means you're taking in information auditorially for the first time with many minimized reps as opposed to looking at the sidelines for a signal or a picture. So auditory, it's a tool. It's also something that you can see from his side eye what he's looking at. For all quarterbacks, quarterbacks, it's a tool to help really drive home certain coaching points and just see what they're seeing to be on the same page as the player. So what does that boil down to, ladies and gentlemen? It's a teaching tool. Just another teaching tool that Mike McDaniel is using to try to perfect Tua, I guess. He doesn't need to be fixed. He needs to be perfected. So you want him to go through his progressions faster? You think he's not fast enough? This will help. You think that he's not able to listen to the play calls? He's not able to make adjustments at the line? This will help with that. All of this is all part of the grand scheme of things. So just be patient. Let's see what happens in training camp. I'm excited. You all should be excited. I know I've said that many times before, but I feel like it bears repeating because there is nothing about this Dolphins team, aside from maybe the offensive line, that should give you anything less than sheer excitement and just anticipation for what we are about to see in 2023. That's going to be it for this show. Thank you all so much for listening. Tomorrow, we're going to see if the Miami Dolphins made any moves with that $13 million in cap space from the whole Byron Jones cut. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see if anything happens. If it doesn't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. If it does, then we'll talk about the players that, or player, maybe Dalvin Cook, maybe not, that they possibly bring in. So with that said, 
We're going to go ahead and just leave it here. If you haven't already gone to ubreakwheelfix.com to get an estimate in just minutes to be able to get your wheels fixed up, or if you want to give your ride a new look, just go ahead and do that. Or you can just use the old fashioned way. Go give it a phone call, 305-748-0112. Again, you can get an estimate in just minutes, and you'll be able to give your ride the ultimate Dolphins makeover. And go to pricepicks.com, use that promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. So go ahead and get started winning today. We're going to call it here. Thank you for listening. We will see you tomorrow for more Fins Nation.